Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Ian Arbuck and Ian Decker will be sharing their experiences with Project Phi. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO13. So, for those who have not heard of Project Phi, because it's not the most well-known thing in the world, this is a cellular service through Google. Uh, So you're paying them to use your phone, uh, the phone number and the data and and all that jazz. Google is my cell phone provider. At this point, Google is almost my everything. I know. You have submitted fully to our great Google overlords. Mm -hmm. They even control the temperature in my house now. Hail Google! (laughs) Also, I'm going to take a quick second here to say... Hi, I'm sorry, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, so if you hear more sniffles and coughs than usual, it's 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 not that I'm dying, it's just that I'm dying, kind of. I have no pity for you. All right, so let's talk about Project Phi. They made a lot of a lot of splashes when they announced Project Phi because it's honestly quite a bit different than a lot of other cellular services that we've seen so far. Very much so. And it inherits so to start off with it inherits some of like Google Voice's really cool features. Uh, and Google Voice was this kind of this service that Google had where your phone number went over the internet essentially. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the the really cool features from Google Voice were like that you can access your calls, text messages, and voicemails from all of your devices. Originally, this was through the the Google Voice website, but Then they kind of rolled it into Hangouts. So you would send text messages via Hangouts. You would make calls via Hangouts. And the people on the other end wouldn't even know that you're using that. They would just see it as coming from a regular telephone number. Yep. I used it a couple of times for phone interviews. Oh, yeah. In large part because I can actually hear stuff on my headset better than I can on my phone. But it's a really nice thing to be Mm -hmm. able to have that computer and to be able to have that high quality audio stuff available to you and i used it to kind of cheat when like i went to sweden i didn't have to get a swedish number and then worry about like not being able to text people in the u.s and whatnot and i just had my phone i i got the biggest data plan that i could in sweden which was like 10 gigabytes for 30 bucks a month it was amazing and all of my texting and calls went over the internet yeah that's not cheating. That's just good planning. It is, yeah. It's not like I intentionally thought of that situation when I first got Google Voice. I just did that because I didn't have a cell phone yet, and so I needed some way to like be able to text people from my laptop. Also, Google Voice had some really cool things like voicemail transcription. Mm-hmm. That was that was. I think a lot of people do that these days, but Google Voice was one of the early early players. I know that Verizon doesn't do that yet. Like, whenever my folks call me and leave a voicemail, mm-hmm. they found out just the other day that my phone does voicemail transcriptions, and they're like, oh, so I can actually leave you a voicemail, and you'll get it, and I don't have to worry about you getting it. It just comes in text form. <laughs> and then there's also the point of the voicemail transcriptions are oftentimes wrong, but in just little ways that make mm-hmm. it change to something completely stupid and really funny. And, of course, you and I have this problem where the name Ian is not the most popular, and it also sounds like a lot of other things. So I think something about the way that my mom pronounces my name means that I always get the beginnings of trans- transcriptions that say, like, hey, Anne, A-N-N-E, <laughs> female given name. <laughs> and I just, I, I've i learned to read that as Ian. I mean, we, we've met guys with names that we usually consider feminine before. Think about Mr. Skinner. Sure, right. Stacy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome guy. Uh, they also offer cheap international calls through Google Voice, which was something that I loved while in Sweden. It, yeah. You know, because it was like like 10 cents per minute to call Swedish numbers. It was, yeah, that was awesome. That's ridiculous. And uh, they also, so what, when you when you sign up for Fi, if you already have a project or a Google Voice number, yeah, the, your Google Voice number becomes your Project Fi number if you want it to. Mm-hmm. And then all of those transcriptions and everything, you know, kind of, proliferate into your project fi account but also if you had put any money into google voice that money goes with you yeah so i i had put like ten dollars into my wallet on google voice so that i in case i needed to make calls while in sweden to other swedish numbers and those ten dollars just went towards paying for my first month of project fi which is awesome and one other thing is 
you won't necessarily have to make a Google Voice number if you want to switch over to Project Fi, you can keep your old cell phone number. Mm -hmm. Like when I was signing up, I had to choose between do I want to keep my old cell phone number or do I want to go and have a new Project Fi number and start everything over from the beginning. I, I obviously chose my old cell phone number, thankfully, but... Yeah, and I think that process is... I mean, obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than getting your Google Voice number in because when you've got your Google Voice number, Google already controls all of that. Yeah. But... I, it didn't. It didn't sound like it was any more complicated than you know switching from T-Mobile to Verizon or something like that, yeah, yeah. and and keeping your number. Yeah, I same. mean, admittedly, it's still a pain in the ass, regardless wherever you're right. going from right. place to place, because you have to go and figure out like all the account numbers and the mm -hmm. phone numbers and submit all that to Google, and all the different places are. All, all the different providers are different and where they list those. And, and especially if you're in the situation where you weren't the primary account holder, Hi. which is a pretty common occurrence, I think, especially as kids grow up and, yeah. and get off of their parents' phone plans and they have to figure all this stuff out for themselves. Or even just as a family plan or a group plan, like mm -hmm. you for the Five Buddies group, where it's, right. what, you, Caleb, and Elliot right now? Yes. And possibly me eventually? Hopefully, um, I'm hoping I'm hoping to convince you to join that like today. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ulterior motives to inviting you on to this episode. <laughs> uh, you you butt munch. But yeah, no, that's that that's also another common occurrence where you're not necessarily the primary account holder, and mm -hmm. it can be a pain in the butt. Yeah, but it's doable. Uh, so Project Fi also add some new features that we haven't seen before. Yeah. And this is where they really started to turn heads. Yeah. In particular, the feature where they use T-Mobile, Sprint, US Cellular, or Wi-Fi service, whichever one is the best option at the time at the place that you currently are, which is crazy. Because we've, we've had these kind of virtual network operators before where, you know, you've got like Cricket Wireless who they don't operate their own physical towers or anything like that, right? They just like rent off of Verizon's network or whatever, wherever Cricket goes through, right? Yeah. This is the first time that we've had a virtual network operator that operates on multiple different networks. Yes. And I think that Google is probably one of the only players who could have gotten away with this, right? Uh, who, who has the sway to convince multiple different networks to get on, uh, you know, to get with the program with them and join up. Uh, now, the funny thing is that they don't actually tell you which network you're using at any given time, except for, like, obviously, if you're on Wi-Fi, you know you're on Wi-Fi. And if you're using cellular, cellular you know that you're using cellular. Yeah. But you don't know which of those three you're using. Just tells me I have LTE. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. They also introduced this thing called Wi-Fi Assistant, which is hmm. Google's gigantic database of Wi-Fi hotspots, which they've been collecting for, like, years and years and years, partially as... Street View cars that go around and take pictures hmm. have also had like Wi-Fi uh, radios in them, and they've they've just passively been like gathering data on like what do people call all of their Wi-Fi networks around here and stuff. Google constantly improving your UI for life. Mm -hmm. And so they so they've been able to use this database to go okay, this network right here is open and free and has a pretty decent internet connection. So all of our Project Fi customers their phones will automatically connect to this network whenever they're in range. And it's pretty awesome because then you don't have to, like when you walk into a building downtown, you don't have to like go like, okay, which one of these businesses has Wi-Fi and you know, which ones can I use and stuff. And so it, it naturally cuts down on your data usage for your cellular plan mm -hmm. uh, because you don't have to think about it. Yep. Now, one of the concerns that people would have, of course, with this is, well, maybe I don't want to connect to these networks because being an open network, anybody can just sniff the packets that are going by and 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 see what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So what Google's done is they automatically encrypt any traffic that goes over one of these open networks that they, that they have in their database. Uh, and it also has the nice side effect of making it very easy to like access Facebook when you're at school <laughs> because it's all encrypted and so the school can't tell you know what's going on because it's essentially a VPN. Really? I I all I was still having trouble accessing Facebook at on the ISD 625 yeah. network. That network for me wasn't originally 
one of the ones that it automatically connected to, right? I had to, you know, specifically tell it like, this is the one that I want to connect to. But after a little while, it started asking me like, hey, this is an open network. Do you want to secure your connection over it? Yeah. And that actually started happening this school year, not last school year. That Yeah. Then I was only in the school last school year. Exactly. And so, so now, uh, yeah, whenever I'm on the Hardings network, everything's encrypted over that and I can do whatever the heck I want. Whatever the heck you want. <laughs> <laughs> God, we're dorks. <laughs> yeah, we are. Another thing that Project Phi does that is a little bit different than most other cellular carriers is that they don't care about tethering, right? They're not going to punish you for hooking up one of your other devices via your phone as like acting like your phone is a hotspot, right? Oh, yeah, that's so, what tethering is. Okay. Yeah, so pretty much all smartphones these days can do tethering. Actually, the first time that I saw this was way back in 2011 working at way back so long ago it, that is a long time ago in the cell phone world that's that is a pretty long time ago i suppose and i was working at polar cups and i was trying to do some homework but of course we didn't have wi-fi in the camper cabin it's right snuffy uh no actually it was cowboy oh yeah he had he had like i forget what android phone he had but he he had tethering on it and so i connected to his phone's network or wi-fi network that it was generating and then all of the stuff that I was doing on the internet went over his cellular connection. Okay. And yeah, so a lot of cellular carriers don't like it when their customers use tethering because that like, you know, can exponentially increase the amount of data that you're using. Yeah. And if, you know, if you're grandfathered into like an unlimited data plan or something like that, then they have to have a lot more traffic than they're expecting going over the network. Yeah. And so they, so they find ways to like try to limit how much tethering you can do. And then, you know, the techie, uh, tech inclined customers find ways around that. And, you know, it's a, this is a whole arm ra- arms race. <laughs> uh, so Google just says like, okay, you can tether as much as you want. And the amount of data that you use over tethering counts exactly the same as if it, your phone was using that data. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, just from a, a user-friendly standpoint, this this way wait makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. And from like a net neutrality standpoint as well. Yeah. Because, like, from from my from my point of view, let's think about our home internet connection, right? Yeah. So CenturyLink has no idea how many devices we have hooked up to our Wi-Fi router. Mm. They, you know, and they don't care. They were were paying them to just be a tube, a dumb tube between us and the rest of the internet and it's not their job to worry about what we're doing it's not their job to worry about how like yeah so like how many devices we're using or anything like that and so if if i'm paying for a certain amount of data or a certain speed of of data or whatever i should be able to get that no matter what devices i'm using that on yeah and rent and rent so should we talk about pricing let's talk about pricing i like the pricing of this one too it's yeah it's pretty nice especially for an individual yeah, that's true. And I think that's why they were able to draw in a lot of people to it is because especially the individual pricing was, was so reasonable. So to start off with, we have $20 per month for your unlimited talk and text. Yep. And they actually recently introduced family plans, which are pretty sweet, where if you if you bundle up with a few other people, each additional person on the plan gets that base price knocked off five dollars so it's fifteen dollars per month for each consecutive person that joins yeah and i thought that it was so when i first read the blog post i was like oh it's fifteen dollars per month for everybody nope since i'm the one who started the plan i still have twenty dollars per month and everybody else is saving five dollars but i'm okay with that because you know i'm helping my friends out no and then beyond the twenty dollars per month or fifteen is ten dollars per gigabyte of data Mm -hmm. and that's just like the flat rate forever and ever for everything yes and that's pretty awesome because it's actually measured on like a per megabyte basis not a per gigabyte basis so if i use half a gigabyte then i'm only spending five dollars right yeah if i use 15 then i'm paying 15 no (laughs) if i use one and a half gigabytes then then i'm paying 15 dollars. so the way this works is when you first sign up for your plan you kind of choose what data tier you're expecting to be at Mm -hmm. um you know by ten dollar increments so if i'm expecting to use about two gigabytes of data per month then i put myself at the two gigabyte tier and at the end of the month so so then i'm spending forty dollars 
right up front, right when mm -hmm. I first start, because that's twenty dollars for the for the unlimited talk and text, and then twenty dollars for my two gigabytes of data. And at the end of the month, they figure out how much data you used, and if you went over, then you get a little bit more of a charge on your next month. If you were underneath two gigabytes, then you get that much credited on your next one. Yep. So your your month to month price is going to fluctuate based on how much data you use. But I've found that I've been pretty consistent when I've been in a consistent situation, right? Yeah. So living at camp was very different from living, living here at home. home. Yeah. Uh, but once I've been here at home, it's been pretty consistent across the board. So out of curiosity, how much data did you sign up for? I put myself at the two gigabyte okay. one. I did too, because one of the things that I know my first month that surprised me was like, oh, hey, look, there's processing fees. So I wasn't quite getting back as much money as I thought that I was going to. Mm. Um, like the, are you talking about the, like the 911 tax and the stuff, or was that processing fees for switching you from Verizon? No, just for like a monthly processing fee. Okay. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And so I was wondering if that amount goes up or down depending on the amount of data that you sign up for. I don't think so. Okay. I think those ones stay the same. Okay. Cause the taxes are applied to the $20 per month, I think. Okay. You know what? I'm actually not sure about that. I'm going to roll that back. <laughs> so I, I don't want to give people false information. I actually don't know how the how the processing fees work or anything like that. Okay. So that might be a little something worth looking into. I mean, it's just a matter of a couple of bucks, but mm -hmm. still, that was something that I was not quite expecting because Silly Me hasn't really paid for my own. Right. Yeah. And com so coming from T-Mobile, I can tell you that... Well, I was also in kind of a weird situation on T-Mobile because uh, I knew about the awesome T-Mobile $30 per month plan with five gigabytes of data, and that was a prepaid plan, right? So yeah. I, you know, there there was nothing to prevent me from just stopping paying T-Mobile and then switching to Project Fi, right? Yeah. There, you know, nothing holding me down, and because of that, T-Mobile also didn't have any like extra stuff for me. Uh, cause you know, I wasn't, I wasn't one of the customers that they knew was going to be around for two years because I didn't have a contract with them or anything mm. like that. Right. And so my, my plan was $30 per month, but then like the taxes were always like three to $4 or something like that. So in reality I was paying like 33 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And obviously because that, that pricing was consistent and, and never changed, the taxes also never changed. So I don't, yeah, I don't know how the project Fi ones change over time okay so that might be worth looking into a little bit mm -hmm. maybe on your own so how do you so how do you feel about this pricing scheme i mean i think that it's incredibly reasonable as mm -hmm. i had said especially for a for an individual because mm -hmm. the limited talk and text is usually a fairly decent thing and then the data is going to be your biggest hit no matter where you go i think for, yeah for most places yeah. and the fact that this has the flexible data Mm -hmm. amounts and it pays you back for whatever you don't use is kind of nice and i mean that that's also just a little bit of a marketing thing where it's because one of the thing that we didn't mention is that it doesn't matter if you go over either they'll just you'll just charge you the regular amount right as well so i mean even if you signed up for no data and then it was just pay as you go i think you do have to say at least one one gigabyte okay i think one gigabyte is the least that you can do okay but still sign up for a small amount and then just pay as you go mm-hmm that's not really saving you a bunch of money. I mean, yes, you're getting money back if you do more than that, but you don't necessarily need to spend the money in the first place. Right. But no, in the end, the pricing scheme is is really nice as it is. Um, yeah, and it, it, especially when you compare it to other U.S., like the, the four major carriers, right? Yeah. Their individual plans are, are usually really, really high, Yeah. Uh, especially when you get up there with like Verizon's like, I actually don't know exactly how much they cost, but they're, you know, they're upwards of a hundred dollars per month, right? Yeah, no, it was like 60, 70, 80. And the fact that it fluctuates, that Project Fi's prices fluctuate based on how much data you use can be a great thing, but it also could be, a, you know, depending on what your situation is, you don't want to like accidentally use a whole lot of data one month and then be surprised at the end when you're like, oh crap, I'm spending like $15 more than I usually do. Yeah. And... That you know that could be a problem for somebody. I, I mean, that's but that just takes careful monitoring and. Yeah, yeah, but like if you have if you have 
kids who grab your phone on a long car trip and watch a bunch of YouTube videos without your knowledge that, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for you and I, who don't need to worry about other people using our devices, it's great. Yes. Yeah. Cause, cause we're in complete control. Yes. Very true. My, so my ideal, this is really close to my ideal, but I, when I consider the stuff that I'm doing on a phone, I don't want the talk and text to be treated differently than the rest of the data that I'm using. Right. Because ultimately like, all of the the voice stuff that I'm transferring gets digitized and, and transmitted digitally, right? Yeah. Same thing with the texts. So I don't consider the twenty dollars per month for unlimited talking text to really be a reasonable amount, because if if I was on if I was still using the same trick that I did with T-Mobile, where all of my talks, texts, and data just go over data, then all I would really want is ten dollars per gigabyte of data. Yeah. Right. And I, w- I wouldn't need like a, a proper phone carrier. I just I just need a data carrier. Right. Yeah. And unfortunately, there aren't really any services that do that. The, like Yet. usually. So in Sweden, there was right. The, the ten dollars of or ten gigabytes of data for 30 bucks a month. That was technically a tablet plan. And I just told them, like, yeah, I have a tablet. Sneaky put my SIM card into my phone instead of a tablet, right? But in the U.S., uh, all of the, like, tablet-like plans that I'm aware of are always add-ons to an existing phone plan. Yeah. And I think that they do that because that's where their highest margins are, right, is on the phone stuff. And I don't like that. <laughs> so if it, my ideal would be just give me the data and 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 route all of my talk and text over data and count that against my the da- the amount of data that i'm using yeah yeah i could see that and it's, especially since texts are like negligible in terms of the amount of data that they take up and i don't call people very often right yeah. so so I, that's not going to be a whole lot of data usage for me not a lot of people do nowadays yeah. actually well well yeah. for for just casual stuff it feels like sure sure I mean, business, yes. Yes, definitely. Like, I'll be making lots of phone calls over the next week mm-hmm. for for work. So, Oh, I think I forgot to mention that one of the really cool features of, of Google Voice that now is in Project Fi is in addition to being able to access all of your, like, your phone calls and your texts and stuff from your computer and your tablet and everything, mm-hmm. is you can also set up so that your your one phone number forwards to any other phones that you want. So like when I like I could tell it during work hours from 7:30 to 11:30 also ring my classroom phone mm. when people call my uh, my Project 5 phone number. So that's a really cool yeah. really cool feature. I just have one phone number so I haven't really had that. But, right. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah, that's a super cool feature. I think did I set that up at camp so that the office phone rang i may have i don't remember i think so because i remember calling you and then you answered either on your computer <laughs> or on the office phone yeah yeah and answering on the computer at camp would have been really risky since we had like barely a megabit yeah well no i know you had, you did actually answer on your computer at least once just because you had your <laughs> webcam uh microphone picking you up and everything else around oh and that's I, there funny was, that's funny and it was going through your speakers too, so I could hear a little bit of a little bit of an echo, and mm-hmm. it's just like this is really bad, Buck. <laughs> That's one thing is it's sometimes hard to control which microphone my computer chooses because I've got yeah. like three microphones plugged into that thing. <laughs> All right, so pricing, good, very yes. good on Project Fi. Next up, coverage, and those are probably the two big things that people care about in a in a carrier, right? Is pricing yeah. and coverage. So coming from T-Mobile, obviously this was a no-brainer for me because T-Mobile is one of their carriers. Yeah. So there's no way that I could lose out, right? Any coverage that I had with T-Mobile, I also get with Project Fi, and then I get some more extra. Yeah. And that was that was one of the big decisions, one of the big factors that brought me to Project Fi is, yes, T-Mobile is great for me here in the Twin Cities, but as soon as I leave the Twin Cities and like go out to a reasonably rural area... I, you know, I go down from LTE to like 3G or 2G and especially like Morris where I went to school, right? Yeah. I had, oh God, awful coverage out there. But also whenever we go down to Iowa to visit family, T-Mobile just straight up does not exist in Iowa. They have a roaming partner. And because of the plan that I had with T-Mobile, the, the prepaid one, I only had a hundred megabit megabytes of data per month when roaming. So oh. yeah, because all of my texts 
and my calls also went over data, that was kind of a damper. Yeah. <laughs> because then, yeah, I was severely limited on what I could do while, while in Iowa. And now I don't have that problem. I have great coverage there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Um. So I came from actually something we had talked about earlier. I came from a little company called, I think, Page Plus, which piggybacked off of the Verizon network. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I had most Verizon coverage. It was just 3G, I think, when I left. They didn't. They hadn't actually upgraded to LTE yet. Right, and you had that problem where you got an LTE phone and then yeah. were told, like, oh, yeah, we don't have LTE coverage yet. And you're like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, and then the phone either fell out of my pocket or was stolen or... Right. It piss eared Yep. But, oh, well, you make mistakes in life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I... I can't really speak for out of state stuff because I didn't really go out of my state that much. Mm-hmm. But I know at at camp, which is one of the places that we've talked about, coverage was usually a little bit spotty, but kind of decent for Verizon. And I know that this past year it was actually awesome for Verizon. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas for us on Project Fi, it was still the spotty kind of. All right, I'm standing out in the middle of the field. I have two bars. Let's go. Yeah, um, right. I I remember. Pretty much every single day, I would walk from our cabin to the dining hall and halfway across the field, that's when all my notifications came in. Yep. Plunk, 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 plunk. It's like, okay, that's where I have data. <laughs> yep. Or sometimes if things were bouncing just right, I could sit in my corner in the cabin and get LTE. Right. Or yeah. nothing. Yeah. It's uh, it was So, so yeah, ca- camp, Filippo Scott Reservation, definitely a crapshoot for most carriers. <laughs> yeah. And it's because we're, we were, like, in, in this weird valley. Like, yeah, I yeah. think all of the cell phone towers are, like, over the ridge on the other side of Cannon Falls. Yeah. Um, well, just on the other side of, like, Billsby. Sure, yeah. Because you could walk up to, to Friendship Point and look out over the, at least the part of the lake that was next to our camp, and you could mm-hmm. see them all over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the other the other situation, I think I, I switched over to Project Five right before I went down to Georgia for training, mm. and who boy was uh, terrible reception down there. But literally everybody was complaining about the reception while I was there, so not much we can do about that, I guess. Yeah. In other words, it's fine that you're in the cities. It's going to be spotty if you're out in the country, regardless of where or what. What what service that you're using? Well, I mean, yeah, and I've I've noticed definitely that being out on like highways, I have great reception, yeah. pretty consistently. But uh, a lot of my friends who are on T-Mobile still, they it goes in and out for them as we drive like along 94 really? out to Fargo or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Huh. So it's yeah, I I am benefiting that's for sure from having Project Fi. Good. And and given how much data I've been using. I'm not spending that much more than, than my awesome $30 a month plan was at. So I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Now, let's talk about international. For those of you who travel a lot, you're not going to have to resort to weird shenanigans like I did, where I had to you know, buy a Swedish SIM card and then have all my stuff go over data, because Project Fi is available in 135 countries. Any data that you use is still $10 per gigabyte. So exactly the same as it is at home. SMS is still unlimited, so you get unlimited texts. And then calls are 20 cents per minute. Which is not bad. That's not bad, yeah. And especially if you don't call anybody, like, yeah. whatever. I mean, if you're doing a business call, that might take a little while. But even then, that's not a whole lot. Right. And and if you know that you are going to make a call, because the way that Project Fi is set up, that you know that it inherits all these features from Google Voice, you can just uh, connect yourself to some Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi network yeah. and call people, and it doesn't cost you anything. Boom. Problem solved. Firepower. All right, let's talk about the phones that are available on Project Fi, and this is definitely their weakest area. Yeah. But, I mean, it makes sense. Sort of. Okay, so, <laughs> so let's get into it. So the the. F- Four or five models of phones that are available are the Nexus 6, the Nexus 5X, the Nexus 6P, and the Pixel phones. So both both sizes of that. And obviously these are all of the phones that Google directly controls, right? And you can get a data data only SIM card for your secondary devices, and then any you know so those don't cost anything extra in terms of the twenty dollars per month you know base price. Any data that they use just gets added on to, onto your the, your your data cap, right? Mm. 
And so, so it's essentially like tethering them through your phone, except that your phone doesn't have to do any of the work. Now, when they when they originally announced Project 5, the Nexus 6 was the only one of these phones that was out, right? Yeah. And so that was the only model phone that was available on the carrier. And their reasoning for it was, well, the, 6, the Nexus 6 has this brand new radio, and it's the only one of its kind that can simultaneously scan two different cellular networks at once to figure out which one's the best. Mm-hmm. And... It sounded dubious, but, you know, it was still plausible because, yes, it's a brand new phone. Maybe nobody else had, you know, put this radio into their phones yet. Okay, we're two years in now, and I have a very hard time believing that no other companies have put that type of radio in their phones. So I think that that was just complete bull. (laughs) Uh, And I'm pretty sure that these are the only phones that are available because Google wants complete control of the whole stack. You know, all the way from the software that's on your phone to the carrier that you're with. It is a monopoly. Yeah. Uh, though, though they are a fairly reasonable monopoly. Yes. Um, so, so let's talk about that right now their lineup is, is a pretty good lineup because they cover all of, the, all of the pricing tiers all the way from $200 up to $900. Yeah. And they, they do that because the Nexus 5X, which launched at $400 – when Project Phi went from being like an invite-only system to being open for everybody earlier mm-hmm. this year, they celebrated by selling the Nexus 5X for $200 off. hey Yeah. And so if you got that, the, the deal was, the caveat was that you have to activate it with Project Phi. So, but, but... Once you activate it with Project Phi, you could do whatever the heck you want, right? You, you could pay for that one month and then never use Project Phi ever again. And so, so it's not like you were uh, getting $200 off and being locked into this carrier for two years the way that most contracts work. You, you could just, you know, take out your SIM and then put in a SIM for whatever carrier you actually used. And so, yeah, so they sold that for like $200 off for a little while. And then again, this month, because they recently announced the family plans, they also bumped the price down for the Nexus 5X and the Nexus 6P. Oh. Yeah, so so those are both uh, a little bit cheaper than they used to be. Plus, they're one-year-old phones at this point, so I think that, you know, they kind of have to do that to encourage people to get them. Yeah. Now, the problem is going to be in the future, for example, next year, because Google has specifically said that they have no plans to continue the Nexus line. And currently, the Pixel line is just high-end phones, right? They start at $650, and they go up to almost $900. <laughs> so a lot of people are not going to be willing to get those phones just to be on Project Fi. Yeah. So what are they going to do next year? How are they going to cover those other price points for their, for their phone side, for the hardware that's available? I don't know. I don't know what they have planned. But they got to do something, because they can't just have the high-end phones. Yeah. Plus another issue for, well, I don't think it's an issue, but I know some people will, um, is just that if people are used to like iOS devices or other other mobile um, iOS, or not iOSs, other mobile OSs, mm-hmm. then Android, they might not want to switch because I know that there's a lot of people who are really devoted to the iOS yep. system. Yep. And- Though I am, I'm not surprised that they don't have iOS devices available on Project yeah. 5. That would have been very surprising yeah. to me. Well, I mean, Android is a Google product, right? Yes. So I would have expected them to... May, ooh, here we go. Maybe their plan is to have some sort of specification that a phone model has to adhere to in order to be available on Fi, right? Mm. So probably the hardware side, it has to have that particular radio thingy-dingy that they have in there. Uh, and then also, I'm sure that Google would stipulate that we, Google, are in charge of all of the updates for this phone. Mm. You know, so that they get to push out all the software for it. Apple's not going to be happy with that. Oh, no, I mean, a- no, Apple Apple will never be available on Project Fi. I'm just going to put that out there right now. <laughs> uh, but I'm saying, like, for other Android partners of Google's, for them to get their phones onto Project Fi, I think that Google will probably have a set of things that they can do yeah. uh, to to get them on there. Uh, and that's that's something that Google has struggled with for a long time, you know, getting getting their hardware partners to kind of adhere to what Google wants the Android ecosystem to be, right? Yeah. Uh, and and a lot of hardware partners just ignoring that and doing what they want. Do what we want. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else to say about uh, about Project Fi? I mean, I'm happy with the Switch if that's worth mm-hmm. anything. 
it's also nice to just have a phone that's capable of doing everything that I want, <laughs> want it to do. That's right. This is the first time that you've had an, a, a current phone yeah. in your life. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's real nice. And yeah, actually, that, that price drop of the Nexus 5X was exactly how I got a bunch of people to come in a, and adopt Project Phi uh, and, and to get in on the android bandwagon you know the the current generation of of good devices so yeah no, i i don't think i have anything else awesome so this has been second opinion if you want to see the show notes for this once again uh those are at the nexus.tv slash so 13 if you want to contact us about this episode you can go to that website and click on the little contact link below our faces. We, uh, we get that as an email. Otherwise, you can reach out to us on Twitter. We are at the Nexus TV. And uh, for the two of us personally, I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter at Ian R. Buck uh, or on my website at ianrbuck.com. And I'm not that fancy, but I'm Ian Decker. And just shoot me a message on Twitter. I'm Bigfoot1138. Sweet. Have a good one. Signing off.